being such a large organization that caters to the interests of people and pedigree dogs across various interests from dog shows to dog sports, the FCI has what they call commissions, which are essentially committees of people that are dedicated or have a vested interest in those particular areas uh, of, of, of the canine world that the FCI also incorporates. And these people are, 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 for want of a better word, like guardians of this particular elements. And so they form what the FCI has as commissions that um, go into looking into all the aspects and areas of that particular area of interest in pedigree dogs, um, whether it's a sport or whether it's um, the building blocks of, of, you know, of, of a particular breed. So the breed standards, um, the scientific commission, these are all commissions, what the FCI calls commissions, and they're formed by members who are all volunteers that put their time and effort into um, developing and being part of the groups that are the custodians of this particular area of interest. So in this series, I speak to many of the presidents or people from these various commissions that the FCI has. There are several commissions, and I hope to cover and be able to speak to as many of them as possible to, again, bring a better understanding of how the FCI works and how these people who are breeders and, and, and you know, trialers or, or exhibitors with interest in that particular area, how they uh, are part of the FCI and form an integral and important um, committee within the FCI to help bring better uh, meaning and understanding to this area. So I hope through this series, you get a better understanding of how these commissions work and how they assist the FCI in being this global organization with a universal interest to people in all areas of pedigree dogs. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the FCI podcast. Today, I have Emmy Simonson of the uh, president of the Dog Dancing Commission of the FCI. Hi, Amy, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, no, it's a, a you know a, a pleasure and, and we want uh, more people to know about all these um, other sports that are part of the FCI and that you know the FCI promotes actively. So it's really our pleasure to have you here to um, tell us a little bit more about uh, you know dog dancing and, and to get all that uh, you know sorted out and you know for more people to find out about uh, this sport and, and hopefully join it. So um, oh, I, I hope think so. <laughs> you're doing us a favor. <laughs> Okay, could you, let's get started. Um, how long have you been president of, of, of the, um, you know, um, Dog Dancing Commission? Well, uh, it's been about two years now. Okay. Uh, the, the commission is about six years old. Excellent. And uh, we have had, we have changed uh, president every second year. Right. Uh, had, had a new one every second year, yeah. So, okay. so I've been and two years. So six years it's been going. And how did you get started with serving on this commission? How did that come about? Yeah, I'm very lucky because I come from a kennel club who's supported us uh, greatly ever since ever since we got interested in this sport. Yeah. Uh, so the Danish Kennel Club hosted the first uh, World Championship right. and hosted the first European Championship. So thinking internationally has become natural to us. Wow. Uh, so I was, I was very grateful when, when I heard that commission uh, would be started and I asked my kennel club if they would allow me to join and they did. So... I'm very, I'm very lucky with their support, really. Fantastic. Yeah. Can, can you tell us, for the benefit of people who have no idea what dog dancing is, can you tell us a little bit about what dog dancing is, um, you know, and the origins, where it all started, that sort of thing, just a, a brief history of, of, of dog dancing? Yeah, yeah. And uh, dog dancing is, uh, is a sport that originally started in England and the United States almost at the same time. Okay. Uh, in, uh, we are we are mostly in Denmark. We are mostly inspired by the English English dog dancers. Okay. Uh, it was a lady named Mary Ray. Yeah, um, yeah that that started it. And uh, I saw it at Crofts, uh, saw her performance, and I got so inspired. Uh, so I wanted to do that with my dog. It's it's a sport where you uh, teach your dog the heel work. There are two sections: the heel work to music and the canine freestyle. Right. And if you work to music, you teach your dog 10 very accurate heel work positions close to the handler. Okay. Uh, and you choreograph a routine to music where you use these 10 positions to show your dog off and your heel work off. Uh, in canine freestyle, you teach more tricks. It's not so um, heel work based. It's not heel work based at all, actually. Uh, you teach your dog tricks. 
um, and then you choreograph a routine um, to music. Uh, when you're judged, when you compete in this sport, you're judged in four sections. Okay. Uh, presentation, which is accuracy, uh, how well performed is the routine, and uh, degree of difficulty, how difficult are the heel work positions or the heel work uh, sections and or if it's freestyle how difficult are the moves the, the tricks you you incorporate in your routine and then you are also judged on uh, musical interpretation so how well you use the music or punctuate the music in your performance oh. that's very important also okay and the last section is uh, something that was introduced by the fci actually when the the dog dancing commission was started which is animal welfare Right. Um, which is also very important in this sport and in, in every dog sport, really. Definitely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you touch a little bit on the on the welfare portion of it? What's the, you know, the FCI is obviously focused on this. What um, what particularly uh, or, or, you know, what the attention is given to to this aspect? Um, yeah. In, in, yeah. In, in dog dancing, well, in most other sports, uh, you have a set course that you have to do. In agility, it's the judge that, that set up a course for you. In obedience, it's a, a commission that makes a program for you to perform. Yeah. In dog dancing, the handler does everything herself or himself. Okay. So you choreograph your own routine, you teach the dog your own tricks. So it's uh, there, there has never been a judge telling you if what you want to do is okay or not, okay. if it's okay for the dog welfare. So it could be dangerous moves you don't want to see. Right. That is marked down in this section. It could be uh, if the dog is not comfortable in the ring okay. uh, and it shows. It could be if the dog is very stressed. It could be well any, anything really where you think this is not as nice for the dog as it is for the handler. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's um, fantastic and obviously a very important um, part of this because, as you said, um, we have to look into the welfare issue. And, and to ensure that they're not just performing dogs, um, being forced to do it, but you know we're, we're at all times mindful of the welfare and health of, of exactly. the dogs. Um, exactly. And also, you know, in many countries, uh, animal shows have been banned from circuses and performing animals have been banned. And in this sport, it's a, it's a fine line between when is it, it's a dog sport and when it's, it's performing animals. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we need to be very, aware of this and have focus, put focus on it. Okay, I mean, one question I have is obviously with this whole performance thing, uh, there might be some negative feelings from people saying that, you know, we are uh, doing things that are not natural to the dogs and all that, and, and uh, the welfare aspect. Have, have you, um, you know, been in situations or the, the, your kennel club been in situations where you faced opposition um, from welfare organizations? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, I think this goes for all dog sport, not not just ours, but because uh, ours are very close to performing animals, it is an issue here that we need to be very aware of. Uh, we had some years ago a journalist uh, contacting the kennel club that sent the uh, the question on to us, asking uh, about animal welfare. Uh, but because the rules already stated that uh, animal welfare is an important part of our sport. Uh, it was very easy. It never became an issue. It never became. Uh, just sent them the rules and said, "Well, here you go. Uh, yeah. We are, we are very aware, aware of, of that. You're, basically, you're aware yeah. of that, and you cover that, and that's an an important exactly. aspect of of yeah. the routine or of you know being awarded marks for that. So exactly, yeah. 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 People can misunderstand it as as you know um, performing dogs uh, like yeah. in circuses before, yeah. but this is not that at all. Um, yeah, if well, if you look if you look at the sport and and think that the dog does this because it has to and not because it wants to, then it's not nice. But yes, but it's important for us to highlight it. the dog does it because it wants to because it has fun. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Wonderful. You know, I, I guess a lot of people after you've given the explanation about what uh, dog dancing is, a lot of people have seen. I mean. You know, there's been competitors on Britain's Got Talent or whatever's got talent where people have gone and they've some have even won uh, the, the whole competition. Yeah. Doing, yeah. It's actually dog dancing routines. Um, you know, there some of them are actually competitors uh, in, in, you know, that you probably know your colleagues and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. become popular. Um, what is the aim of the commission? What, what does the commission want to do? Um, what is the focus of the FCI commission then for uh, dog dancing? 
Well, I think the, the main uh, aim for us is to promote the sport. Okay. It's still a very small sport, and I think that's uh, partly because it's a difficult sport. Okay. Uh, you have to train your dog, and you also have to choreograph and be artistic yourself and perform right. yourself. Um, but I also think it's because a dog. Of, a lot of people think it's uh, it's complicated to get started. Okay. Um, because it's not just something a set course, <laughs> yeah. uh, which makes it so. So we want to uh, let people know or, or spread the word that yes, it can be very advanced. Uh, once you are in the top of your sport, but in the beginning, it's a lot less complicated, uh, and it's just great fun. You work with music, you work, you work with dog. What's not to like? Well, so I think, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing. I, I, every time I've watched it, I, I feel the dogs seem to be having more fun. Um, you know, of course, the handlers enjoy it as well, but the handlers are, are focusing on accuracy, getting through the routine. But the dogs seem to be having an exactly. amazing time, absolutely yeah. enjoying it. And they're, and, and it's almost like they're on cue. They know when the, you know, the, the, what they're supposed to be doing at, at, at each point. Um, so exactly. he seemed to, to love yeah. it, which is... Which is um, so I think spreading the word that dog dancing is not what, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. You have, it's easy to get started and it's fun to get started. And if you want to uh, later, you can, you can make it into a very advanced sport or elite, elite sport or championship sport, but you can also just have fun with your dog in the back garden playing music and, and dancing. Um, and, and I think that's a very important <laughs> job for us. Um, yes. Yes, I, yeah. I, I would agree with you. So can, can you, you talked about starting, can you tell us how you got started? I mean, I know you said Mary Ray inspired you um, mm. and how you, you know, you, you got into this, but how, what was your journey? Were you an obedience competitor? How, what was the beginning of, of you getting involved in this sport? Yeah, I've basically done every dog sport I can think of. <laughs> well, <laughs> at, at least every Border Collie related dog sport, I have, I have Border Collies. Okay. Uh, I've done obedience. I've done agility. I've, I've done, done sheepdog files. Um, right. And back, uh, I think it was in uh, 98, uh, 97, a friend uh, asked me if, I've, if I thought it would be fun to, to try to do a dog dancing routine. I said, oh, yes. I had a rough collie at the time. Uh, so I did my first uh, performance at the Rough Collie anniversary, Rough Collie Club anniversary here in Denmark with my Rough Collie. Nice. And when I and when I look back, I think I wonder if I knew, even knew there was music playing because the musical <laughs> interpretation was really bad. <laughs> but, but yeah, we got started, and and it just evolved from there. So you, yeah. you you're originally um, uh, you know an obedience trialer. You've done all, all, all sorts of things. You know um, you were saying. So is that generally the path that people come that they tend to if they're interested in dog dancing that they would have to start in obedience and 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 get that because it is it is about basically taking obedience bits and 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 putting it choreographing it. So would they have to? Is that usually the path that people take, or do you have people that come in fresh direct to to dog dancing without? doing obedience um, comp competition maybe, but I mean, training is necessary, obviously. I think I think it's changing these years because uh, yes, like if you had asked me this question five years ago, I would have said, yes, people usually come from uh, obedience right. or maybe agility or, or some other dog sports. We also have rally obedience in yes. Denmark and people come from there too. But I think uh, these years, uh, people are into dog training for the sake of dog training, just for, for the fun of it it doesn't have to be a sport they like clicker training uh, and they like to click out behaviors um so i think a lot of people actually have a, a great repertoire of, of tricks that the dogs can do and right. then they realize there's actually a sport where i can do this <laughs> um yeah so i think a lot of people come from trick training now wow Just okay having fun with the dogs and teaching tricks for the fun of teaching it uh, and then later realize that this could actually be a sport. That, I mean, that, that makes sense because we've, we've started, um, or, we, you know, before COVID hit, um, we started trick dog training uh, yeah. and, and, you know, competition to get people involved and, and to then, you know, get them more people to just do simple stuff with their dogs that they would train anyway, shake hands, paw, that sort of stuff. Exactly. Um, and then now they're, you know, taking them to the next level of uh, coming into competition um, of you know the other things so do um 
obviously a, a basic in obedience is important for um for for dog dancing would you say that's that's something that they would have to to go through and, and know about or or just the no no okay. no not really i okay. think uh, the important thing is that the dog really wants to work with the handler okay um yeah but but it doesn't have to be like obedience trial work um yeah actually i think in heel work to music a base in in uh, obedience might be helpful but but not for canine freestyle. Okay, so I, you bring up an interesting point, and I, I've, you know, the dogs I've seen seem to enjoy it. Have you ever had it in your time a dog that just didn't enjoy doing dancing, you know, dog dancing, that just was like, I, I do not enjoy this? Um, or do most tend to like it because it's something they're doing with their owners who they love? Mm. Yeah, I have, I've never had a dog who didn't want to do any kind of dog dancing i've had dogs that didn't want to do it competitive that didn't like going into the ring or uh, didn't like uh, the very advanced work that you know a certain level it becomes difficult and the dog needs to have a great uh, working spirit or, or, or keenness to work and other right. dogs that that didn't have that and sort of gave up when it became too difficult um but no i've never had a dog that didn't enjoy um okay. each learning tricks and and um yeah and working so no. could you you mentioned about the different levels could you maybe tell us a little bit about how that works as he'll work to music and then there's um this this the other one can you tell us a little bit about how they differ how um the the judging goes about what you know what 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 do they what are the aspects that are looked at for each specifically um yeah. that and then make some oh, look at that. I'll just take this little one off the table before <laughs> before I answer your question. <laughs> he wants to yeah. show us a routine. <laughs> he, he wants to walk on the table, does he? That's what he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have in uh, in he works to music. You have ten uh, positions that are described in the rules. Uh, they have to be quite accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. This is. Um, very much for dogs that enjoy repetition <laughs> because you have to repeat uh, the position and the, the direction okay. you're moving on all directions yeah you do heel work sideways uh, backwards on the spot like so so this is a very technical um thing uh, and then we have uh, the dog has to be in a heel work posi position for 75% of the routine. So we have 25% to do small freestyle moves okay. uh, to highlight the music or to change between positions. Okay. Um, the other uh, section is freestyle. Okay. And it is, as the name <laughs> implies, it is free. Uh, anything goes except heel work. You don't, you don't want any more than 25% uh, heel work. Okay. And in many freestyle routines, you don't have heel work at all. Okay. So it's yeah. quite technical in that way, in that sense that you have to be very mindful when you're doing your routine um, to do something that has, you know, for the for, for the heel work to music, that's 75% heel work. And then the freestyle, canine freestyle, that they have to, you know, that it's a minimum, uh, you know, or maximum of 25%, and you're not overdoing that. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, a handler would have to, be sort of artistic in a way to to, uh, <laughs> to to put together a nice routine. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to be creative anyway, and and you because you choreograph your own routine and okay. you choose your own music. Okay. And you want to tell a story uh, uh, with with your routine, okay. and also um, you need to like performing. You need to be comfortable going into a ring and perform yourself. You need to be comfortable with people looking at you. Right. Uh, I think a lot of handlers who wouldn't do like theater or, or don't like to act, they still enjoy this because they can sort of hide behind the dog. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would never I would never act without my dog, <laughs> but I enjoy going into the ring with my dog. OK. And, yeah. and so when, they, <laughs> when the judges are evaluating you, um, it, how much of it is on technical stuff? How much is it on creativity, uh, artistic? Um, you yeah, know. Uh, you have um, nine. You have uh, thirty points in all, and nine of them goes to presentation for accuracy. How well performed is it? Is there any obvious mistakes? Anything that okay. doesn't look like the dog is taking the handler's cue, or, or yeah. Okay. And then they have nine points for um, 
for a degree of difficulty of content. Uh, how difficult is this? Uh, how much content? How many different moves uh, have you put in? Have you put too many in so it seems uh, overfilled and, and hectic? Or does it, does it work with the dark uh, speed, uh, etc.? And then we have musical interpretation, which is the artistic uh, part of it. How well does everything go with the music? Does the handler perform to the music? Does the dog perform to the music? Is the costume right for the music? Is the prop right for the music? Is there a story? Uh, do we punctuate the music? So that's a whole uh, artistic part. And then you have uh, free points for animal welfare. Okay. And it's not because we feel that animal welfare is less important. It's just because you have fewer things to look at in this, right. in this section, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. I guess, but the, it's subjective then in a way. I mean, there is a technical part to it, but it is subjective if the judge yeah. enjoyed the routine or they felt that it was lively or the music was good or, you know. Yeah. Um, and this is why we have three judges and not just one. Uh, because then in the end it should sort of sort of even out so we right. have the right uh, eventually yeah right right excellent and and within each um within each discipline are there different levels so is there like a beginner's yes. level then there's a you know that which they advance through or can they um you know like with obedience you've got to do you know the the levels novice all those things before you progress with 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 uh, dog dancing is it the same that you have to yeah. progress through the levels yeah yeah yeah, you start you start in in the novice class or the starters class, and then you work your way up. Okay. Um, yeah, which is good because uh, it gives the dogs a chance to become uh, comfortable in the ring before okay. the be before the moves have to be too advanced. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. And and how popular is 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 dog dancing? Um, uh, let's start with your own home country, and then and then talk about Europe maybe, um, and then within the FCI. How, how how popular is it? I think we're still a very small sport compared to, to other sports. I mean, in Denmark, rally obedience and dog dancing started at the same time. And okay. rally obedience uh, is a lot bigger than, than dog dancing. Okay. Uh, and I think okay. it's because we have a smaller audience, so, so to speak. We have, few, I mean, you need to, you need to like to perform. You need to like to put yourself um in the center of a ring people watching yeah. you yeah. and um, yeah yeah so we are still but it's growing uh, we have more and more uh, what what sort of numbers would you okay so how many competitions would you have in a year let's talk about before covid i understand with covid it's all, <laughs> yeah. it's all yeah. it'd be messed up but pre covid what sort of um, number of events were you all having in denmark yeah, well, we had uh, at least one a month and some month uh, more than one. Um, okay. So it was it was growing and we had quite a lot of uh, competitors. We have uh, maybe 50, 60, up to 200 starts uh, in, in a competition. In each, in each discipline or, or, or across both? No, across both. Both, wow. yeah. And and all all levels, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so so it, it, it is growing. Uh, just not as fast as many other sports. Well, that's a good thing sometimes that it doesn't get too popular and then, you know, it gets ruined, I guess. Um, you know, this way people are doing it more organically. And and what, a, what about in Europe? Um, what about which other countries are, you know, where this sport is very strong or it's growing um, really strongly? Yes, I think it's a, it's growing in, in most countries, actually, in Europe now. Uh, Russia is a very strong country. They have... Uh -huh. Yeah, some very, very good dog dancers. Uh, also, Germany uh, is a big country now. Belgium, Holland, uh, Sweden. Sweden have some very good dog dancers. Finland, Norway. It's spreading. It's, 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 yeah. And and do you guys travel to other countries to compete at, at their events? Like, you know, I mean, within Europe, that those of you that can travel, do they, do you find that you people tend to go to other countries to compete for competition? Yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. so there's international, so there's national, and there's also international competitions. Yeah, uh, we had uh, a sort of rule for international competition that proved, I think it was last year. So okay. we do now actually have uh, the rules to have international competition. We haven't had one yet. Okay. Uh, so you can actually become an international dog dancing champion now. Wow. Uh, we haven't had any international competitions yet due to the COVID, but 
yeah, but we could have. <laughs> well, well the, the good thing is that there's, it's on the cards, it's planned. Exactly, um, yeah. You know, which we is also brilliant. have uh, world, the World Championship every year. And okay. uh, yeah. So, so that's it. okay. The World Championship is like the equivalent of the World Dog Show for confirmation shows, and yeah. that's been going for a number of years already. Uh, the... Yeah, we Denmark hosted the first uh, World Championship back in two thousand and ten. Okay, and then yeah. it relates to other countries now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's back in Denmark two uh, thousand and twenty-three. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Wonderful, and that's a, a one a, a once a year event that um, gets yeah. competitors. Do you, do you get any competitors from the UK? I mean, I know dog. Uh, you know, they call it dancing with dogs. There, um, it, do the, you get UK competitors coming across to compete? Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. how cool is that? How cool? Yeah. And and um, okay, that's that's very encouraging. Um, and and um, what are the titles that are offer on offer usually at, at say a national event? Uh, do they become a champion? What's the, yeah. what's the, okay, so they become a champion. Yeah, yeah, you can become a national champion and also, as I said, an international champion now. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. And let's talk about one of the reasons why we did this interview was that you, you, you're all having an organizing an international uh, judges or, or is it judges seminar? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, in, in January. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean, dog dancing has been uh, growing uh, even before the FCI got involved. Uh, as I said, a lot of countries have um, their own national rules, but, but six years ago we formed the, the Dog Dancing Commission and we had a, a set of shared FCI rules. Okay. And obviously these are closer to some countries' rules than to others. So for some judges, it's a new way of thinking. I mean, the animal welfare section is new. This was right. formed in this set of rules. Okay. Um, so to prepare the judges for international competition and for championship um, judging, we want to uh, present the thoughts behind the rules. Uh, we differ from other some for some from some countries' rules. Uh, in the aspect that we don't want to take points off for mistakes, we want to reward good work. Okay. Uh, so we don't have deductions okay. as such. Um, when some in some countries you would say uh, the dog barked, I take points off. The dog did this, I take points off. In this, we want to say, but we saw the dog do this and this and this, and we saw the handler do this and this and this, and we want to reward that. Okay. In the end, it should give the same result, basically. It's, but, it's more positive base. It's sort of like reward. Yeah, it's, a, it's a different. It's a different mindset, I think. Um, and so we want to to present everybody for this uh, for the thoughts behind the rules. Okay. Uh, to hopefully um, create a more um, shared understanding of of. How to look at dog dancing. But just to be clear, this is the FCI official rules for for yes. for, for dog dancing. Yeah. Okay, so that's why it'll be yeah. presented, and it's happening on the twenty second and twenty third of January. Uh, yeah. It's an online um, yeah. a Zoom meeting, um, yeah. and the closing date for for that um, for when people can still sign up. Uh, it's a week before uh, oh. the few, I think it's the fourteenth of January. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So shortly after this interview, they should be yeah. signing up. Uh, yeah. And where, where can they sign up, Emmy, for 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 this? Um, you know, well, each each kennel club, each uh, national kennel club should have had an invitation sent out uh, via the FCI office. Um, right. Or otherwise, um, could you put my email address somewhere so people yeah. could send me an email? <laughs> yeah, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. No, you might get some admirers as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think let's make it easy, and I'll say they they can contact um, uh, yeah. the uh, you know the FCI office or all their yeah. national kennel clubs. Um, yeah, and they uh, they'll put me in, in touch with me. Yeah, that would be great. okay. Excellent, and and so this is being hosted um, by the FCI, obviously the the commission by your commission, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's to get a more unified. Are there very differing rules currently across um, the FCI world? Uh, for, let's leave. Um, you know, UK and 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 the, uh, the you know AKC aside, um, but is there very differing rules within uh, FCI countries? Well, yeah, uh, there there is, but uh, we had a, a physical uh, seminar in I think it was two thousand and thirteen in Denmark, and we had 
uh, a lot of judges judging the same routines from their set of rules. And the interesting part was that we basically uh, ended with the same results, the same ranking. Uh, so, oh. so yes, the rules are different and the the scoring system is they are different. But I think we pretty much agree on what good dog dancing is. I, I like that it's a positive rewarding. So rather than a minusing points for mistakes, um, it's yeah. rewarding the handlers and the dogs uh, for something that is positive. Um, yeah. And, and you know, uh, and and a reward based, and obviously, um, the the section about the health and welfare is important. Uh, animal mm -hmm. welfare that they must, um, you know, take care of that. Uh, I think that's brilliant. I, I'm sure within the FCI countries, that's not an issue to include. Um, and um, okay, and and can you tell us what your future aspirations are for this commission? Uh, what do you hope to 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 achieve? Maybe from starting with the seminar, uh, which you've briefly talked about and then going forward what would you like to see happening more because we want to promote you know the whole idea of this podcast is to promote the other activities that the fci strongly advocates and promotes so how can we you know how can what are your views and uh, or rather what are your aspirations to get this moving forward yeah well of course i hope that this sport will will have more followers uh, it will grow uh, i think uh, working with tricks and working uh, with music, it's a very positive way of working with your dog. Yeah. We, we have some very happy dogs in our sport. So, so obviously I want the sport to grow. I also want uh, to see the international uh, cooperation and partnership. I think that is very important uh, to create uh, friendships and, and, um, and bonds uh, between uh, across borders. I think that's important too. So I hope that that we can that we can um, we can have, have more international competitions too yeah what, what do you see as currently um what, what do you see as what would would be better or you'd like to see improved um you know with with, with regards uh, could be to rules or could be to how competitions are run what are some things that you would like to see better improved mm. yeah i would like i think and that goes for any dog sport. I think it's very important that we put focus on on dogs' welfare, on dogs' uh, happiness. Right. Uh, and we have started doing that by putting in an animal welfare section. Uh, I think that's very important that we do this for the dog and not for the for the prizes. That's yeah. right. So I, well, yeah. I think, listen. Uh, we're not winning cash prizes or, or big, no. you know, bungalow houses or something like that. It's, uh, you know, and to spend that amount of time training these dogs to get them to to do these things, it has to be a passion yeah. of love yeah. um, rather than uh, rather than, you know, going for prizes. So I'm, I'm yeah. always I'm always in awe and respect for all of you who do dog sports, because I think it's a, a lot harder uh, than confirmation dog shows. <laughs> Yeah, we put a lot, a lot of time and and effort into the training. Yeah, and do, so does the dog, so it should be fun for them. Yeah, do, do you see um, more younger people getting involved in in dog sports? You know, seeing that most of them are maybe more athletic or whatever. It, it, what's the demographics that you're seeing with with people being involved in? Let's talk about you know dog dancing and then other other dog sports. Is it? I think it. it I think there are different traditions in different countries. In right. Denmark, we don't see a lot of young children uh, or young uh, adults in, in dog sports. Uh, it seems to be something you start a little a little later in life. Okay. I think it's it's getting better. <laughs> we I know the Danish Kennel Club is putting a lot of effort into to uh, to this, uh, and I think it is working. We do see more young people, um, but I think. Some other countries, I mean, if you look at Sweden, I think the Swedish dog dancers, they start young and, and um, yeah, and they're very talented. Brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, we, need, we need to have our youth involved in this as well. Nothing against all the people currently, but <laughs> exactly. going forward. I mean, unfortunately, you know, we, we across all FCI sports, you're seeing that the youth have got other interests these days. And mm. so they're not, you know, uh, and especially with something like dog sports where you have to spend time training. Uh, it's a it's a lot of effort and mm. what about yeah effort? and and not just uh, time training but also the skills and it takes time to learn yes yeah yeah, yeah. 
Excellent. Okay, I mean, I wish um, your commission all the best and um, especially for the seminar you're doing. I hope that this podcast gets uh, more of uh, the people who are involved in it to the seminar so that they know and they can be involved and they can uh, know what the FCI has got planned as, as far as the rules and harmonizing the rules across all the countries, um, FCI countries, and um, also for the sport in general. That um, that you know it becomes uh, something that more and more people get involved in, or, or or even the general public who own a pedigree dog. That would be wonderful. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much, Amy, for your time. I've really appreciated and had fun talking to you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks again Thanks for inviting me. No problem. All the best. Take care. Bye. Now. Bye.